Well, I want to take you back then to the scriptural basis for that. So you've referred to Matthew 18, verse 16. And as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that in turn really is a reference back to Deuteronomy 19, verse 15. In other words, what uh, Jesus Christ was doing is referring back to that aspect of Mosaic law, dealing with uh, evidence. Uh, he did quote, as he often did, from the Mosaic law, but he gave a Christian application. So, but that is an element to be found in the Mosaic law as set out in Deuteronomy 19.15, is that right? It is an element that is found in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, <clears throat> what I'm interested in is, and perhaps you can help me on this, is that why that applies to a case of sexual assault when clearly uh, what was being addressed uh, in the reference in Matthew that, that you gave us uh, was not a question of sexual assault. Uh, yes, if I can uh, just clarify that a little further then. Uh, there are basic principles that the Bible highlights, and uh, I can give you Second Corinthians 13, verse 1. Uh, sorry, Mr. Stewart. Yes, carry on. You can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. First uh, Timothy chapter 5, verse 19. It's not just a one-off verse, but this is a basic principle for rules of evidence as found in the Bible. But if I could just emphasize again, this is only referring to a church-appointed committee that determines whether a person should remain in the congregation or not. Uh, the judicial system, and I'm sure if I can save the courts uh, or the commission's time, uh, I'm sure you're going to ref want to refer me back to Deuteronomy where it mentions the penalty of stoning. But what we need to remember is the laws that were given back in the nation of Israel you had the judiciary, you had the punishment system, everything combined together. When the Christian arrangement came about, with our Lord Jesus Christ giving us direction, uh, the Christian church does not have the authority to throw people into prison, to execute, or to do anything to them. So the judicial system in the Christian uh, arrangement involves the spiritual cleanliness of the congregation, and the rules of evidence remain the same. All the way through. Well, Mr. Jackson, that's exactly the, the point I want to get to. You'll be familiar, and perhaps we can, we can go to, to Deuteronomy 22, uh, 23 to 27. Deuteronomy 22, 23 so to 27. Page 304. Mm -hmm. So where it said that if a man is found lying down with a woman who is the wife of another man... Both of them must die together. Now, let me just preface this. I'm not addressing the question of the stoning. I'm addressing the question of evidence. Um, the man who lay down with the woman as well as the woman. Uh, sorry, I, I read that badly. Both of them must die together. The man who lay down with the woman as, as well as the woman. So you must remove what is bad out of Israel. Then it says, if a virgin is engaged to a man and another man happens to meet her in the city and lies down with her, you should bring them both out to the gate of that city and stone them to death. The girl, because she did not scream in the city, and the man, because he humiliated the wife of his fellow man. So you must remove what is evil from your midst. And then the next example is the one I'm particularly interested in. If, however, the man happened to meet the engaged girl in the field, and the man overpowered her and lay down with her, and the man who lay down with her, sorry, the man who lay down with her is to die by himself and you must do nothing to the girl. The girl has not committed a sin deserving of death. This case is the same as when a man attacks his fellow man and murders him. For he happened to meet her in the field, and the engaged girl screamed, but there was no one to rescue her. So the point of this uh, last example is that uh, there's no second witness, is there? Because the woman's in the field, she screamed, but there was no one to rescue her. Do you accept that? Uh, could I explain, uh, Mr. Stewart, that, you see, I think already under testimony, uh, some of Jehovah's Witnesses have explained that the two witness, uh, witnesses uh, needed can be, in some cases, the circumstances. Uh, I think, was it a, uh, an example given? 
I'll come to that, Mr. Jackson. Okay, so we'll get through this a lot quicker and easier if we just address it one step at a time. So, okay. the, the present step. So, the answer to your question. The present step is Sorry. this: is that in that example, you accept it's a case where uh, the uh, there was no other witness beyond the woman herself. Uh, there was no other witness except the woman herself, but added to that were the circumstances. Yes, well, the circumstances were that she was raped in the field. Mm -hmm. and, yes, but they were circumstances. And it was sufficient, there being only one witness, it was nevertheless sufficient for the conclusion that the man should be stoned to death. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Now, is it... I think we're agreeing on the point. Yes, is it not the case that had Jesus been asked... about a case of sexual abuse, he may have referred back to this part of Deuteronomy and said that it's not required to have two witnesses. Um, I certainly would like to ask Jesus that, and I, I can't at the moment. I hope to in the future. Uh, but uh, uh, that's a hypothetical question, which we, if we had an answer, then we could support what you said. Well, it's hypothetical in a sense, but really what I'm, I'm driving at is is the scriptural basis, and, and you the scholar, I'm not, uh, is the scriptural basis to the two-witness rule uh, really so solid, or is there not space for your governing body to recognize that in cases of sexual abuse uh, it need not apply? Uh, again, if I could just mention the fact that, uh, that we've already acknowledged that circumstances can also be one of the witnesses. Well, I'll, I'll come to that, but my, my, my question is a different one. It's whether the scriptural basis to, a, to the two-witness rule in relation to cases of sexual abuse has a proper foundation. Uh, we believe it does because of the number of times that that principle is emphasized in the scriptures. 